Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Last week we learned how to pattern draft for this cami top and this week I'm going to show you how to put it together. I'm using bias binding for um, the armhole finish and also just a little decoration at the back and I hope you like it. Um, this was a store-bought one but I probably would have prefer to have made my own simply because of the neatness that you get in uh, the one that you make yourself but here is the project and uh, if you give it a go let me know how you get on and uh, let's get started with the project to complete this project you obviously need your pattern your fabric and you need one inch wide by spanding this is a store-bought one, so um, this is about one inch wide and I'm using a contrast bias banding but if you like a self-coloured one, go and choose the one that you fancy. We're going to cut both the patterns on fold, so that is your front and that's your back. So let me go ahead and cut both front and back and we start off with the project. Okay, here is our back pattern, the front pattern bus binding and I've taken the original front of our t-shirt pattern. Why do we need this? It's because we need to measure the from the center of your shoulder and go all the way and just go like that, curve your tape like so and then measure it. This is coming to about 11 and a half inches. I'm going to take it half an inch less because that's going to be 11. 11 um, twice of 11 is 22, 22 is quite a big armhole and that's absolutely fine for a camisole. So I'm going to cut two strips of bass binding that is 22 inches long. So double 11 and that comes to 22. So we need two strips of this, that's going to go for the two armholes. Once we've done that, we're going to place this on top of this and make sure where we need to make the marking, where to start. Um, attaching the main body to the bias binding. I mentioned earlier that you need two strips, I forgot that you need two strips per armhole which means you need four strips which is 22 inches long. So there's my four strips and I'm going to keep it aside and now let's just see where we're going to place this. Now I just wanted to show you for the back, this is my back pattern like so and when you keep it like that, even though the back is straight, what I have done from the bottom, I've curved it a little bit because I want the bottom to be slightly longer. So this is about three inches longer than the front. So apart from that, there's no changes at all. I've also cut out a facing, which is just at the top of your neckline, exactly the same pattern. This is about three inches wide. So that is that. I'm going to keep the pattern aside and now because your side seam matches perfectly to your t-shirt pattern because we haven't changed that at all it's gone a little bit probably the length's gone a little bit less but uh, the side seam should match perfectly so keep your side seam like so and then measure this width now remember, this width has got seam allowance added in this one. So leaving the seam allowance, we're going to match, we're going to measure that, and that's coming to about two inches. By the time I have sewn in my facing, that will go down. So that would be two and a half inches. So basically at the back it is two and a half inches. You know, if you're doing it, then write it down somewhere, the back would be two and a half inches. And then the front, if you open the front up, because of the cowl effect, it's, it's too long and you don't have a set pattern that you would be able to kind of determine. So I'm going to keep this again matching the side seams, like so. When, while making the patterns, I mentioned that it would be about five inches from the front and the back. So. Basically, this is how your cowl is going to fall. So it's going to fall a little bit deeper than your neckline here. So this is where we need to start making the pleats, like so. Okay, so if you measure this, again, by the time we've done it, it would be two and a half, two inches to two and a half inches. 
So if we take between four and a half to five inches from the top to the back, that should be absolutely fine. So keep that in mind. And um, also I just want to show you that if I keep my pattern, I've taken, I've cut off a little bit extra. This is about an inch, simply because we would fold this around the cowl neckline. So I don't have to do another facing for this. Because it was a straight line, you could just do a fold like this, okay? So if you want to, you could go and include that in your pattern. Saves you remembering that you have to add an inch. So I'm going to keep my original pattern aside and we'll start putting this together. Okay, so let's take two of them strips because the other two strips is only for the finishing. Right at the end, we're going to close the edges. So we're going to fold it into half and we're going to make a pencil mark on the fold. Okay, so the back will be two and a half inches, so go and measure it two and a half inches. And then the front would be another two and a half to three inches, but I'm going to keep it for two and a half and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's the way it's going to be. And I'm going to place this one next to it and just make sure that my marking is identical. That is the center fold that's the back and that's the front so I'm gonna write as back so then I know that needs to go to the back so let's go and sew the facing first for the back because without that we can't do anything so I'm going to take the back like so just sew the facing it's um, just a little curved line so let me go ahead and do this off camera and then we come back and start joining to the bias binding. Just thought I'll show you what I'm doing for the facing. From the wrong side, I have sewn in the bias binding like so. Basically opened my bias binding and sewn in a stitch. And then we're going to turn it over to the right side and I'm going to put a top stitch. That way when it's hanging on the hanger, it just looks nice and then kind of gives you that really kind of designer sort of finish. So I'm going to put a top stitch and then this is going to go in and then face like that. So you get, you get a strip of fabric just from inside showing through. I've sewn in the bias binding onto my facing. It's looking so nice. Once it's ironed, it's going to sit flat and uh, it's looking so nice. So I thought I'm going to make it a feature at the back like so because we're going to have the other bias binding coming here. So it's going to look quite nice. So instead of going inside, I'm going to start from inside and then flap, flip it over to the outside. It's almost like a little flap sitting outside, but we're going to close it. So I'm going to go and stitch here, invert it, and then do a top stitch. Okay, always you need to press it from the, um, on the seam just to make sure the facing sits right. So I'm going to press this. This is the wrong side of the main fabric, like so. And then I'm going to turn over the facing to the right side and press it from the top like that. And now I go and sew a top stitch on top of the binding. That way it's kind of sitting flat. Okay, that's how your top looks like. There's a little bit that's pushed away in the side. So I'm just going to trim that extra bit off. That doesn't change the pattern as much. It's just that, you know, the edges have pushed a little bit towards the side. Okay, so we need to now go and attach the front and the back. So there are the two strips that we have marked earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off from there and then go either you can do that or you can do this way as well because whichever way it's fine. So just make sure that the marking is right. And we just go and sew from there to there, like so. And start off with the marking and then start and finish with a back stitch. And this is just going to be a normal stitch and we're going to sew on the fold. So you're going to take the same allowance like what you require and then you're going to kind of, you know, go and sew on the fold all the way till the end. 
we're going to do this on both the sides. Okay, we're going to go and sew the bias binding to the back. When you're pinning it, just make sure that you never stretch the fabric because it's quite easy for the base fabric to stretch because